Well, if you print, how would you say this? If there's a certain amount of goods and services and capital in the economy and you just keep printing money, you're not creating any more capital in the economy. You're not creating any more products. You're not creating any more buildings. You're not creating any more services. All you're doing is doubling and tripling the amount of currency. So if I just gave everybody in the United States a billion dollars and everybody went out to buy a Ferrari, right? Would there be 250 million Ferraris? Like, <laughs> I, mean, I, can, I can print the money, right? Like look at Venezuela, look at Zimbabwe. They can print the money. You can give someone a trillion dollar note but that doesn't create more stuff, right? You're just creating paper. So ultimately, that, in, that inflation, it works only to an extent if you can export it. And what you're doing is you're not, you're not creating anything. What you're doing is you're redistributing wealth. Like if there's $10 billion in the economy and there's this much stuff and I give a billion dollars to you, you now get 10% of the stuff from somebody else, which means that everybody else lost 10% of their stuff, right? As I inflate the economy, I'm actually, or inflate the currency, I'm actually redistributing wealth from those that uh, store their life savings in currency or currency derivatives, in cash. If you have, if you had a million dollars in the bank 12 months ago, today it buys you 34% less, right? The S&P is up 34%. You have a million dollars. If you put it in the stock market, you've got $1.34 million. If you hold it in cash, you've got a million dollars. If you go to buy a stock now, it costs you 34% more to buy the stock. If you go to buy a house in the Hamptons, it's 40% more to buy the house in the Hamptons. You know, if you, other things are going up in price, your cash is fixed. So it turns out that that um, you've got some people that uh, don't have net cash positions. If you're, if you're a sophisticated investor and you're wealthy, all of your assets are in property. You have buildings, you have companies, you have, you have real estate, you have uh, collectibles, you have sports franchises. Right, you have things. If you're middle class, working class, you're working for cash, and whatever cash you've got, right, um, is either sitting in the bank or uh, you don't have a lot of net cash. So the real significance here is if the dollar loses 20% of its purchasing power each year, then the value of your salary is de deteriorating by 20% a year. It's not falling at the rate of CPI inflation. It's falling at the rate of monetary inflation. The road to serfdom is working exponentially harder for a currency growing exponentially weaker. Okay. That's the problem. You're a dentist, you're, you're, you're generating 5% more a year for a decade. I'm inflating the money supply at 20% a year for a decade. If you save every penny in 10 years, you'll be able to buy one quarter of what you could have bought today because the price of housing is going up at 20% right. a year and you're just not ever gonna catch up, right? Because you're, uh, you're getting paid in a currency. The only way you can actually stay ahead is to grow your cash flows faster than the rate of monetary inflation. And that's why the rate of expansion of the money supply is so critical. And that, that, there's not even a word for that other than cost of capital. The best surrogate for monetary inflation, in my opinion, is the S&P index, a, a distributed market basket yep. of scarce desirable products. So money is energy. The problem is inflation. If, if we're inflating at 10% a year, you know, you've got 10 pints of blood in your body. When you go to give blood, I take a pint out. When I take a pint of blood out of your body, you lose the red blood platelets. Anybody common sense knows you run the Boston Marathon the next day, you've got a problem. You can't perform as an athlete. It takes about four to six weeks to replace the red blood cells. So when I take a pint of blood, you're not going to be able to perform for a month to two, probably two months later. Now, imagine if I actually took a pint of your blood every month forever. That's inflation. So I'm running an economy. I'm the king. You, know, you have a dojo, and I send someone from the government, and we just take a pint of blood from every one of your fighters, and then next month we do it again. And next month we do it again. And next month we do it again. Now, 
what do you expect your ac your athletic performance to be? <laughs> In decline. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem of, an, of a currency which is collapsing. But let me tell you, that's 10 percent. Venezuela is not 10 percent. Zimbabwe is not 10 percent. The Argentine peso was one peso to the dollar 20 years ago, and it's like it's pushing toward 200 pesos to the dollar today. They've lost 95, 98, 99 percent. In a hyperinflating economy or a rapidly inflating economy, you're not losing 10 percent of your economic value a year. You're losing 20 to 25 to 30 to 40. So that's like I send some dude to the dojo to bleed you every week. And then at some point, I'm sending someone to bleed you every day. And that's the Weimar Republic, right? Hyperinflation. When uh, not another metaphor, the currency is to the economy what your blood is to your body. And economic energy or money is to the currency what oxygen is to your blood. So common sense says if I keep sucking the oxygen out of the room, if I suck the oxygen out of the room, you're going to either suffocate or freeze to death. And if I keep sucking the economic energy out of the currency, the economy collapses. In the extreme, you get ripped back to Stone Age barter. Right. When the money doesn't work right, anymore, right. I have to trade you cigarettes for bullets. Right. And the problem with that is, is the economy becomes a million times less efficient. Right. If you don't have money. It's like, now, how many countries in the world have a collapsed currency? Sixty six are dollarized. There's one hundred and eighty about countries. There's one hundred and thirty floating currencies. All of them are weaker than the dollar. The U.S. dollar is the world's reserve currency. The U.S. dollar is expanding. It was expanding 10 percent a year for a decade, now expanding at 14 percent a year. It expanded 34 percent over the past 12 months. The dollar is weakening. OK, it's like the auction is getting sucked out of the room. So, Tucker, if I told you the auction is getting sucked out of the room and there's an oxygen mask drops out of the ceiling over there, what would you do? Run for it. Yeah. Put the oxygen mask on. Bitcoin is the oxygen mask. Bitcoin, the, the idea of Bitcoin. Let, let's let's move to the okay, third. Let me pause and say right? you've made the most compelling case I've ever heard for the need for something like Bitcoin. So you're saying just to make sure that everyone's following this, the whole point of Bitcoin is to escape the inflation vortex that has consumed all these previous empires. The point of Bitcoin is to fix the money, and money is energy, and energy is life. And if I keep sucking the energy out of the economy, I'm sucking the oxygen out of your system. Either under the best case, you perform poorly. Under the worst case, I suffocate you to death or freeze you to death. That's the problem. That's why, it, that's why empires collapse. That's why economies collapse. And the problem, it's not just a problem for an individual. It's not just a problem for a family. It's a problem for every institution. It's a problem for every company. It's a problem for every city, every municipality, every government, every civilization. They all have this problem. And you can generally trace the problem to I, I fought a war I couldn't afford to fight. <laughs> and I paid for it with money I didn't have. Yeah. Right? If you, you declare a war on. COVID, you've got a war. You declare war in Vietnam. You declare war on fill in the blank. Every, every, history is full of wars. If I had to fight them with taxes, then eventually my population would say no more. We don't want to pay the tax. If I fight them by inflating the coinage, then I get a couple of years, two, three, four years before people realize it. Eventually, I just collapse the currency. So money is essential to civilization. The problem is inflation. And why does it happen? It's a natural human condition because as you have an authority that controls the money, the temptation to inflate the money supply is, is omnipresent and, and inescapable. And every civilization has suffered from it at one point in time.